The cheapest new iPhone you can buy today from Apple to be Apple intelligence ready is this, the iPhone 16e. I've been a fan of the 16e from day one, as you know, but now that I've installed the public beta of iOS 26 in it, it's taken it to another level. Suddenly, the iPhone 16e has become a powerhouse. I've been using iOS 26 for the past week or so now on my 16e, and in this video, I want to walk you through some of the more unusual and less obvious features that I've stumbled across. I'm David, and this is D Talking Tech. A lot of you watching this video, I know, I know from the comments on previous videos, I know have bought the 16e, and you know firsthand what a great phone it is. And for all of those folks out there saying it's just an overpriced parts bin, think again. The battery will easily see me through a day and a half, and the C1 modem has meant that cool quality has improved too. And because it's got the A18 chip inside, it is Apple intelligence ready. And now with iOS 26 installed, that finally means something, as you'll find out later on. As I said, I'm not interested in covering all the headline features of the new OS. You'll know about those already. But before we get started on my top new features, first, my thoughts on liquid glass. Uh, I like it. It's, the thing is, it's subtle. It didn't hit me in the face, and I really like that. It is subtle, and the main thing is, it seems just to somehow create more screen real estate. It somehow opens everything up. But if it's not for you, then you can almost get rid of it by going to settings, accessibility, display and text size, reduce transparency. But the overall UI of iOS 26 is clean, minimal, functional, it's very me. Apple's played a winner with it, and the best way I can pay a compliment is by saying that it immediately makes iOS 18 look old and outdated. Right, let's get on to the good stuff and check out some new features that I've come across in iOS 26 over the past few days that I've been using it. First up, let's look at some camera improvements. Have you ever had that sinking feeling of having been out all day, having taken loads of photos, only to find out later on that your lens was dirty and had fingerprints all over it. Well, that should be a thing of the past now. With the new feature I found in iOS 26, you need to go to settings and then to camera, scroll down until you find lens cleaning hints. When you've got that turned on, your iPhone 16e will display a warning on screen if it thinks your lens is dirty and needs a clean. If you want a super clean camera display, you can now turn off the flash and live photo icons at the top of the display here. To do that, you need to go back into settings and then in the camera app, look for the indicators, and there you can turn those off. So now once you're back in your camera screen, you'll find that those icons have gone at the top of the screen there. Still in the camera app, but now switching over to the video side of things. Before, if you wanted to change the frame rates for video, it meant going through a menu at the top of the screen. That's now been simplified, and the frame rates now appear at the top of the camera screen itself. Simply by tapping here, you can choose the resolution, and frame rate that you want to shoot at. It's another example of the clean lines of iOS 26 I was speaking about a little bit earlier on. Of course, as you know, there's loads of ways you can take a picture on your iPhone, but this new method is possibly the easiest and most convenient yet. If you have AirPods Pro or AirPods 4, you can now take a picture or start to record a video just by pressing the stem. You need to go into your AirPods, then scroll down to the new function camera remote there. You can obviously turn them off, have them set for press once or press and hold. I think probably press once is the easiest. It's going to be super simple now to set up and quickly take a picture. To get the camera remote feature, you'll need to update your AirPods to the latest public beta firmware. The version I'm on is 8A324B. To update your firmware, you'll have to have your AirPods on charge for at least 30 minutes somewhere near your phone. The only way you'll know when the update is done is by checking the version number. Annoyingly, this isn't currently available with AirPods Max, not even the latest USB-C version I've got. Speaking of AirPods, there are a few updates for those as well. Apart from the camera remote function that I showed you just a moment ago, there's a couple of other new features I found with AirPods in iOS 26. With conversation awareness turned on, AirPods will now recognize your name. So if somebody uses your name, AirPods will flip into transparency mode for a moment or two. Also, there's this pause media when falling asleep feature that you can use with AirPods as well. Turning on will mean that they'll pause audio after about 10 minutes if they detect your head isn't moving. The idea being that if, like me, you wear AirPods in bed, then it will save you having to rewind in the morning to catch up on the podcast that you were listening to the night before. In theory, AirPods now have studio quality mics and improved audio, but if I'm being honest with you, I couldn't detect any difference in either area. AirPods have always been great, and they still are. There's some general quality of life improvements too. You may have heard about Apple's new battery intelligence feature. Well, one of the more obvious ways you'll notice it in action is when you plug your iPhone in to charge it up. At the top of the screen now, you'll notice on your lock screen not only how much charge you've got, but how long it's going to take it to charge to 80%. There was another new battery feature I came across as well. Go to settings and battery, and then scroll down until you get to power modes. 
And in power mode, you can now turn on adaptive power. With that toggled on, Batch Intelligence will make some clever background changes for you, such as lowering the screen brightness and slowing down some background activities as well. It will typically kick in when you've got around about 20% battery left. That said, the battery life on the iPhone 16e has been brilliant. And as I mentioned, I'm regularly getting a day and a half out of it already, but it's another useful feature to be aware of. Screenshots have been improved. And guess what? The ad loop is back at last. Find it, take a screenshot, and then tap on the pen tip icon at the top there. Then on the plus symbol and at the bottom, you'll now see add loop. And then you'll see that you've got this magnifier that you can highlight and position wherever you want before you send that screenshot off to somebody. And also, if you find it a pain having your screenshots come into the bottom left as a thumbnail, you can alter that now as well. Go back to settings, into general, go to screen capture, and there you can now turn on full screen previews. So now when you take a screenshot, you'll see that it is now front and center in the middle of your screen. And there's one favor you can do me if you're enjoying this video and maybe some of the others that you've watched and you haven't yet subscribed. Honestly, just by hitting that subscribe button, turning on notifications really does help me out. It helps the channel to grow. And of course, we're coming into iPhone season. I have got plenty of ideas and plans and videos sorted out ready for the iPhone season. So now is a great time to sub and help the channel grow. And there's a couple of other ways that you can stay involved or get involved with the channel as well. I send out a free, a totally free video newsletter every weekend. It goes out Sunday lunchtimes, and it just chats about things behind the scene here at the studio that I can't talk about on the main video. So if that sounds like it's of interest to you, leave me your details. There's ways you can do that in the description below. And also we've now got our own D-Talking Tech Discord server. So if you wanna talk with other like-minded Apple nuts during the week, that's the place to do it. And Circle to Search is now finally on the iPhone. To see Circle to Search in action, here's what you do. You take a picture of something, once you've got that picture, then you screenshot it. Once your screenshot's up, highlight whatever it is you're interested in and swipe up to see images from Google. But there is a much quicker way of going about it. Instead of doing that, you could simply go into Control Center and then you could launch Visual Intelligence. Tap the button there and hit Search. And again, that'll bring up the images from Google for you. Also in Control Center, while you're in there, I've added in reminders as a shortcut app as well. If you're selling the way home and you just want to add something quickly into a list you want to pick up from the shop on the way home, it's much quicker to have the shortcut here in the control center rather than launching the reminders app. iOS 26 now offers you live captions. To enable it, go into settings. Once in settings, go to accessibility. In accessibility, scroll all the way down to live captions and toggle that on. Then once you've got that switched on, on whatever device you're using, in my case, the iPhone 16e, it will use on-device intelligence to display captions across all apps, as you can see do it there in real time. Something else, another AI feature that is quite useful that you might like to take a look at is back in Control Center. Uh, you want to download and put this on as a shortcut, the local capture. Let's say you'll need to add it in your Control Center, but once you've done that, you can tap it at any time during a FaceTime call or a Zoom call, and it will record the call's video and audio. And at the end of that, it'll put it into your files app or downloads or wherever you've asked it to go. Live translation is also now part of the messages app too, as Apple intelligence just quietly and seamlessly spreads through everything you do on your iPhone. There's been some improvements to the phone app as well. I'm sure like you these days, I'm really cautious about answering any calls from numbers that I don't recognize. Well, now iOS 26 has thought about that and it's gonna do some of the work for you. If you go into settings, apps and phone, and in the phone app, you can now scroll down to this new section, which is the screen unknown callers. There, you can choose to either have the call answered and put in your missed calls. You can go in to ask them why they're calling, or the last option is the silence, which will silence their call altogether. In the phone app also, you'll notice this other new box called detect call waiting. It's gonna to be toggled on by default, and this handy new feature will detect when you're put on hold, and then it'll notify you when it's time for you to pick up. So those are some of my favorite new features that I've come across in the first few weeks I've been using iOS 26. By no means is it everything. I wasn't trying to cover everything. And if I've missed out any gems that you think I'd like, please, please let me know. I'd love to hear from you. But hopefully this rundown will have given you a taste of how good iOS 26 is and how it's taken this 600 pound iPhone 16e to another level. And if you've enjoyed this video, then I think you might like this one as well, where I chat about why the 16e and the iPad mini makes such a great pair.